Man, I used to hate taking the limits when absolute value bars were involved until I figured out that there's an easy way to handle it. And I'll show you. The very first thing I always do when I see absolute value bars is to break it up into two sections. Here's what I mean. Where would this, oh yeah, that's negative three, great. Where would this flip from negative to positive? Well, ignoring the absolute value bars, the inside would flip at negative three. So when X is less than negative three, I'm going to get a different result than when X was already greater than three. Oh, greater than negative three. And again, here's what I mean. When X is less than negative three, that number, I don't know, negative four, negative five, negative 100, plus three gives me a negative number on the inside of the absolute value bars. The absolute value bars then have the effect of flipping the sign. So when X is less than negative three, those absolute value bars are the equivalent of a negative sign being applied to whatever I got. My denominator is unchanged. Check. When X is greater than negative three, that could be negative two, negative one, a hundred, positive a million, whatever that number is and you add three, it's positive. So the effect of the absolute value bars is, is nothing. It doesn't change the sign because it's already positive. So that means that I can ignore those absolute value bars. I like putting them as round brackets, just so I remember. And then I can keep the X plus three on bottom as well. Now, note, the X plus threes here are gonna cancel. This sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't. I would say it happens in 95% of cases, but whatever. Watch out uh, when you're doing the absolute value bar ones because things are probably gonna cancel. Those cancel it with each other, and that gives me negative one. These cancel with each other to give me positive one. And so the limit as X approaches negative three from the left is negative one. And the limit as X approaches negative three from the right is positive one. What I'm gonna do here is write that in math. The limit as X approaches negative three from the left is negative one, which is not the same as the limit as X approaches negative three from the right, which is positive one. Now I probably should have written a, like an F of X in here so that we said we were taking the limit of, but the point is that they are not the same. So the original limit does not exist. It's a jump discontinuity at X equals minus three, and there is no double-sided limit. Cool? Cool. Now I got one more for you, but I lost it in this pile of papers. So you're gonna have to give me a second here. I could have sworn I put it in the right order. Da, da, da. Here we are. This one has two sets of absolute value bars. Now you could break this into cases because this will change its sign at positive a quarter. This will change its sign at negative a quarter. But because they gave us a definite value of X where X is approaching zero, I should point out that four times zero minus one is a negative number. Four times zero plus one is a positive number. So you already know what the effect of each absolute value bar at zero is. What I mean is the limit as X approaches zero, here, oh boy, here in the first section, the effect of the absolute value bars is to flip the sign. That's why I dropped the bars, but put it in round brackets and put the negative out front. We're flipping the sign on whatever that negative number is. Minus, and this is a positive number, so the absolute value bars have no effect. I'm leaving, I'm not putting an extra negative out here because I'm not flipping the sign. And I still have to divide by X actually. Oh well. Now I'm gonna expand the top here, see what we get. I get the limit as X approaches zero of negative four X plus one minus four X minus one all over X plus one and minus one cancel out with each other. I have the limit as X approaches zero of negative eight X over X. Ah, oh, nice. The X is finally cancel. Check, check. And so the answer is negative eight.
beautiful. Pretty easy as long as you can figure out whether or not what's in the absolute value bars is positive or negative. Cool? Cool. Best of luck to you.